Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, actually, before we get started here on Hebrews 11, going to be talking a little bit about faith this morning. Uh, I wanted to share with you uh, something that I am actually working on here. And this video right here, I know that people went nuts over having to use an AI voice. Uh, but on this interview here that I am doing, my voice will be heard normally. And then we'll do the painstaking process of getting the best quality AI we can for this particular guest. This particular information is critical. It's not a long video, so you don't have to worry about having to go through, but maybe about 20 minutes. But the, you have to understand the seriousness of some of the guests that I have uh, protecting their identity is crucial. And, uh, and in this case here, it's very crucial. And AI cannot be altered. When we use an, when, uh, when I, I hate the word AI, but when you use a computer generated voice, they can't de scramble the encryption to figure out who that is. So please understand that's for their protection. Uh, we do have a little bit better quality AI voice that I can use, and that's what I'll do on this particular interview. But I think the information is very important. Uh, it will be on Patreon. It will not be on Israeli News Live. Uh, not for the moment, anyway. Uh, maybe a little bit later we can do that. But uh, I, it's going to take quite a bit of work. Elizabeth spent three days on the last one, but we were trying to work out bugs. Uh, this one, I think, will be a little bit easier. She'll help me get that part done, and then I'll dub my voice in with it so that you don't have to deal with my voice being in an AI voice. Uh, but you can catch that over on Patreon. Also, we have a platform similar to that over on iConnect that we'll be starting up as well. So hopefully we can do that. But I think the information is that valuable. Um, and, and you're going to hear from some people from over, overseas there in the Middle East and that know firsthand how the Iranians feel about Israel, the United States. Uh, and oddly enough how they would cheer in the streets if the government of Iran was taken down. Now, they care about their own people, but when it comes to the government, they're very much against their own government. So I, I, that's why I say it's a very important message, uh, very insightful, and I think that it is something that, that will certainly bless you if you hear it. Uh, anyway, listen, uh, I want to share with you, though, what's really on my heart, and I apologize I did not get to speak to you this weekend. Uh, we had a brother come in, very precious brother, we wanted to spend some time with him. Uh, plus, at the same time, I'm trying to get ready to head to Florida. Then my daughter, Ariella, ended up in the emergency room last night. Uh, thankfully, by God's grace, she's doing very well, though, and back home already. Um, and But I have to go back down to Florida, still dealing with my the passing of my father, uh, as well as the passing of my father-in-law. Uh, issues that we have to take care of down there. So do be praying for us. We'll be down there for uh, several weeks, actually, possibly. I'm not really sure for sure how long. We haven't decided yet, but uh, pray for us. We do need your prayers there. And uh, I, I want to pray just briefly here with you before I do this, because even though this is our news channel, and, and this is a very simple video, I think is very important that we touch this subject a little bit about faith. So, Heavenly Father, I just ask that you'll bless those ears that hear and the hearts, Father, that they can receive the words that I'll share with them today. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. That's so important right there. It's the evidence of things not seen. For by it, and granted, when when this was written in the book of Hebrews, uh, believed to be uh, written by Paul, there's others that believe that Aquila may have written this document. I don't really know the answer to that. But um, faith, when you have faith, faith gives, gives way to love, and then to love it goes to works. See, it's like, for example, you know, when Jesus talks about the, you know, uh, the, you know, the, the seed that was sown, some fell on the rock, some fell on the, fell by the wayside, some fell on the road, some fell in good soil. 
that, that seed that falls in good soil, faith brings that forth, that seed. And then what happens is then that love of Jesus Christ in your heart brings forth you to manifest the works of God. Now, that works of God actually is what is the evidence of things not seen. And I'm going to share with you guys, because it seems to have blessed a lot of people, two examples that have happened uh, for, for our family here just recently. Just recently. One, well, actually, one was two years ago, and the other one was just this past week. Because I want to encourage you, to encourage you to know that your, your own faith can cause that faith, it is truly a substance and it's something, it's a substance of hope, but the hope gives, hope is what just kind of starts faith off, but then faith grabs a hold of the promise of Almighty God and won't let go of it. Faith is like a bulldog. When it gets a hold of something, he don't let go. That's a bad way of maybe a really a bad analogy, but it is a real evidence, right? Now watch what he says here. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. That's, that's it, powerful in itself. You know, being, yet being dead, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. That all, oh my gosh, I mean, I don't know. That, that's one you're going to really have to go really deep and think about that for a minute, right? By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet he speaketh. So what is the gift then? Think about it. What is the gift? Because it concludes, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. And yet Jesus is called the what? He's, he's the second Adam. Now, I'll let you think about that one. I'm not even going to I'm not even going to say it. I'm just going to let you think about it. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him before for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. That one should answer this one. Whoop. Sorry about that. Verse 5 should answer verse 4 for you if you're really thinking deep about it. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That is so true. By faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark, for to the saving of his household, by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. All right, I'm not going to leave you in, in, in a mystery here. Let me come back up to this one for you again for a second here. Let me first unhighlight it. Let me let me highlight this portion of it for you I know because I know this is going to be confusing I really would just like the gifts part right now if you will notice God testifying of his gifts plural he was offering as we know the lamb for his sins Cain offered up the fruit of the field. But it's really not the, it's not the fact of a lamb or a fruit because even in the temple under the law, you could bring in the wheat, the grain harvest, the barley harvest. There were offerings like this being made. Meal offering could be made. 
first fruits were to be offered. But in this case, we have the word gifts. And then you have, and by it, he being dead yet speaketh. His own life had become an offering. And it was a similitude of Christ. It was a foreshadowing that Jesus Christ would be killed. Yet, even though he's dead, he speaks. That is, that's the antecedent letting you know that one of those gifts was his own life. Think about it. But his faith, his faith didn't silence his voice. All right. I wanted to share that with you. And, 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 and then what I wanted to be able to share with you is a couple of testimonies. This here is Ruby. When we first came to Tennessee, we had a bunch of little baby chicks. And out of that, I think, I think we had about eight chicks at the time. Uh, I, let's see, three of them, I think three were, ro yeah, three were roosters. The, f the other five were hens, maybe six hens. I forget exactly which ones. Later, we ended up, my wife pick, picked up uh, two um, uh, blue uh, chickens that were called uh, from, the ch from um, Czechoslovakia. Uh, they're, they're a breed of Czechoslovakia, but you could get them here. Kind of hard to find them, but you could get them. And uh, she brought them home. And so we had quite a few chickens. Now, before the two blue ones, though, there these Ruby was one of the chickens that was in. Uh, they were still in the baby coop. They had not fully grown to maturity. They were getting close. And a wild animal got in there and killed nearly every single one of those chickens. Um Ruby and one other, a white one we called her Mary, uh, were severely injured. As you can see by the eye that she has there, uh, and I don't know how well you can see it, so I'm going to kind of blow that up for you. She's blind in that eye right there. I think I'm pretty sure she is, I should say there. Uh, the, her whole head was nearly ripped apart. Uh, on the other side of her head, there was no eyeball at all. She had an empty socket and the string just hanging down with nothing on it. Just, I guess, the optic nerve itself. Um, for several days, she stood in one spot. My father-in-law, Stefan, was just devastated over what had happened. And uh, especially in, in, in her condition, he would go and pick her up and feed her from his hand because she couldn't, she couldn't go anywhere. She couldn't see. And uh, Mary, the white chick that we had, she just recently died. Um, but she was ripped, her whole chest was just ripped wide, wide open and just laying over off to the side. Um, and she couldn't walk, couldn't do anything. And I didn't think either one of them were gonna, well, in the case of Ruby, uh, I figured she's just finished. You know, because she's totally blind. I knew this one eye was so mangled up. Uh, now that eye, that's that you. Can, the eye is in her head, but I knew she couldn't see from it, and I didn't. And at that time, not only that, it was real bloody. You, you know, you couldn't. You just figure she's done. Um, and so I started thinking to myself, you know, the humane thing to do is to put both of these chickens down because they're just not going to make it. Um, and then it come to my heart, you know, instead of just putting them down, I need to pray for them. Uh, I, I, maybe one day I'll share some testimony of animals that I've prayed for over the years that have been healed, broken back of a cat, everything, uh, miraculously. So I thought, no, I said, I'm going to pray for them uh, instead. And I prayed for Ruby. We called her Ruby. And... I asked God, I said, God, I said, this poor girl, I said, she can't see, has no eye on one side, and and this other one is so mangled up, I don't know if she'll ever be able to see out of that. I said, Lord, I don't want to have to put them down. They're such kind birds. I mean, I could pick them up and hold them and pet them and everything, you know. And uh, my father-in-law, the same way, we would pick them up and, and, and love them. And, and, um, and so I prayed for them. And I would say two days... I guess is all it was. I don't know for sure now, but about two days later, this is what we had here. Brand new, 
on the opposite side of her head a brand new eye just as you see it there. I'm talking about putting faith to work. Believing in something that was not there. A totally hollow eye socket with a little string hanging down from her eye, her optic nerve, and now a brand new eye. That she still bears in her body this other one though, this wounded. And she is, uh, I think we still have from that original group there, we, we have, uh, let's see, we have Miss Rue, but her husband died. I called it her husband. It was a certain type of chicken there. She's like a speckled chicken. We have her and we have Mary's sister, Martha. We call her Martha. Uh, she's still alive. And uh, uh, the rest, you, of course, they, almost every one of them died from that first attack. You know, and of course they have they have birthed more children, and so we always have lots of chickens. But uh, but she has really been the sweetheart. Now there's one other thing I want to show you too. Now later I built them this little coop here, and of course you can see the ducks down there, and, that, and that's one of the gray ones right there. My wife brought home. You can see her right there by the door there, and uh, of course my wife's cat Cookie. She loves that. Oh, there's the. I think that's the white hen right there, Martha, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but then we got our little ducks right there. And you guys, I think I've shared some with you before. This here is a fig tree I planted when we first moved here. Twice it's been killed by cold weather. A friend of mine up here told me, he said, Steve, he said, those kind of trees, th that type of a fig tree will not survive in Tennessee. And he told me which type of fig tree I needed to get. So, but this year we had minus eight degrees. And it killed it so bad that you could just go up there and you could snap off a limb just just done right well I sat there and this past week you know here we are almost the beginning of uh, June not a leaf on it nowhere not at the base nothing and I, I would go up to it and I would take a hold of it with my hand and I would say live in the name of Jesus Christ and Three times I did that. And the third time, I really got very firm about it. And I said, I spoke to the tree for it to live in the name of Jesus Christ. And when I did, the next morning I come out. And right there at the base, the life had already sprung up. And I checked the base every day. Now, I will tell you something, though. You will see when I come back from Florida, and I'll send you the picture, I'll share that with you. Those limbs will also have leaves in them as well. When I prayed for it the last time it died, same thing happened. And by the way, I don't know if you can see it from the pictures um, as of yet. Let me see if I can get it big enough for you. But the life is already coming back to the limbs. The color is starting to come back to the limbs already. And uh, so I know that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews, what is that? Hebrews 11, 8, I believe. Same chapter we're at. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, he spoke to the fig tree because it didn't put forth its fruit and cursed it. And it withered and died. But the same Son of God, if we have faith in what He has already done for us, He can bring life as He did in the case of this tree right here. And there it is at the base right there, already sprouting up. And like I said, I check it every day. It was dead as a doornail. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, doing an Institute of Biblical Research. If God blesses you in some way that things we share with you and you would like and he lays it upon your heart i don't like people to do it unless god feels it on their heart to do so you want to support the work we do please do so uh israelinewslive.org our website our mailing address always above my head uh, uh with me going out of town right now though it might be a little bit easier if you or if you feel led to do it online just click right there on do on or, or donate online you can click that button there and it takes you straight there. Even though it's PayPal, it's you can use any kind of debit or credit card, whatever you want. And we thank you for your kindness. 